more boxes of stuff. I decided not to go with fuses on this project because, uh, you know, I thought I might blow a few of them. So, I got a uh, filthy big circuit breaker. This is single core copper power cable. Check it out. That is 50 mil square power cable. It's hefty, hefty stuff. This is rated to carry something like uh, up to uh, 600 amps and something like crazy, crazy, crazy voltage. And this is just one core. You know when you look at an extension cable? You know a normal power extension cable? Like what's on, on the end of one of these? One of these? Normal 240 volt power cable. Skinny. Single core electric car cable. Now there are three wires inside this black cable. This is one wire. Got an idea of what sort of juice we're playing with here, kids? Mmm. Big juice. Here's my battery monitor. This is the only bit of instrumentation I'm going to be cutting into the dashboard. This is my... Hey, let's open it. It's like Christmas. There we go. That is a Xantrex Link 10 battery monitor. It's really, really, really simple. But it doesn't matter if it's ugly, because I'm not actually going to be looking at this bit. This is the control bit that I'm uh, using to put together my groovy little instrumentation using my Palm Tungsten T that I showed you last week. EV Dash, Peter Ola's little bit of Palm software that's free. This is the bit that feeds the Palm Tungsten and gets it to read out with those nice big digital numbers instead of these tiny little digital numbers. Bit of cardboard. We get real technical here. This is going to be the bit of cardboard, or rather the shape of my bit of metal in the engine bay. And uh, it's gonna have a little bend like that. So when the air goes in, it scoops it up and keeps the components nice and cool. Because uh, I know with motor controllers, I've seen a few people go, my motor controller gets too hot and then they're gonna make all this kind of water piping that goes underneath it and keeps it cool. I don't wanna, don't wanna do that stuff. So I'm gonna make it out of aluminium for two reasons, or aluminum for you Yanks, for two reasons. One, it'll act as a big heat sink for the bits that get hot. And two, nice and strong. And uh, three, nice and shiny. And four, kind of cheap. That's for the top of the gearbox. That's for the top of the engine mount. And here is a hole that's specifically so people can see the engine or the motor, the electric motor. That hole doesn't have to be there. It's just that people are gonna be going, where's the motor? And it's nice and red and shiny, so. Of course I want to show them, don't I? Real technical. See how that fits. It's a wire. I don't know if I'll, which of these wires I'll be able to cut, and which I won't. But you know, I've got EFI management stuff for the electric, oh, for the petrol motor. I'm gonna leave all the wires there till I've got the electrics going because uh, I don't wanna get to the end of it and go, Ooh, should've kept that wire. Right, right. So yeah, I got my, uh, got my little bit of the uh, gearbox poking through. I've offset this hole. So if you look straight above it, you don't get to see the hole electric motor, but if you're standing in front of it, as most people will be, it's offset, it looks good. Yeah, that'll work. Let's go get it made out of metal. All right, metalizer. For those who haven't heard of it, it's awesome stuff. Here we go. Tell I'm not a spray painter. <laughs> the idea is to get the metalizer into the cardboard thick enough so it'll, you know, metalize. Okay. Coffee time. Oh. 
<laughs> nice. Mm. Nice. It works. Here's a hot tip. All right. Ooh, solid. I've got three mil metalizer, which gives you a three mil thickness. So uh, hopefully that'll work. Now, see how it all comes together. Oh, 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 nice, shiny, metalizer, it's good. Oh, well, let's bolt this puppy in. I've got some hinges on this. I've decided that this is going to hinge, therefore enabling me easy access to wires underneath. I only thought of that this morning because um, I'm going to need to put oil or synthetic oil or whatever in the gearbox sometime and it's going to be hard to do with a plate bolted in above it isn't it when you don't have enough extenders you just go the super extender because i can't quite get to these ones down there all right Spring washers. Now I didn't know this, but uh, spring washers, these little thingies here, are very good, or well, stuff that is going to be prone to vibration. Put a spring washer on it, and then it's less likely to rattle itself loose. One hefty lug. How huge is that? Check it out. Huge. This is important. When I'm wiring this thing up, of course, remember, I'm gonna be having these 90 amp hour batteries, 144 volts of 90 amp hour batteries coming out on, stay there, two wires like this. I believe it's highly, highly, highly recommended that you don't do all your wiring with bare hands. I've uh, seen Gav and some other people wear these great big, huge, rubber gloves that uh, essentially will be the difference between life and death. If they uh, brush a couple of contacts and close the circuit, you don't want to close the circuit with yourself. That's what the rubber gloves are for, to stop you from electrocuting yourself. It's DC, but it still packs a punch at that sort of current. Hey, on the subject of wiring safety, how many times have you done this? Oh, I need to do up a battery terminal. Dink, dink, bzzzt. Two terminals, metal tool, zappity zap zap zap. That on that equals sparky badness. Sparky badness. Now, that's only a 12 volt battery. Scale that up to 144 volt 90 amp battery pack. You won't be there to tell the tale. So what you do is you get insulation tape, gaffer tape, whatever, and you wrap your tools in tape. So if you do arc across a couple of connectors with your edge of your tool, nothing will happen. Why? Because it's insulated. If you've ever uh, installed a home hi-fi, you've probably stripped some of that little figure eight bit of wire. You know, a lot of people just kind of go and strip them and the little cord comes out and you twist them up. That's not gonna work with this stuff. Oh, not gonna work. Oh. Right way. That was easy. Well, that's my first go. That is one hefty chunk of copper. You feed it all in there, you keep pushing that on until it's all the way up to there. You get your big clamp and it goes and it never, ever, ever comes off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some heat shrink and put it over here which is uh, essentially, it's just plastic tubing, which when you heat it up, shrinks, heat shrink. Pretty cryptic, I know. So that means it will look beautiful and be totally, totally safe and covered. Of course, the next trick is to figure out where to put all this stuff. So 
I've got my Kelly controller there. It's kind of small and I might want to replace it with a Ziva or a uh, Zilla or a Curtis controller later. So I'm leaving some space there and I'm just checking that my tilting plate can tilt and the components won't get in the way of the firewall there. It's kind of important. I've also got to take into account the cable run. Figure where the cables are going to go. Got my brake vacuum booster there, the pretty yellow thing. Just figure out where to put that over there. Of course, I've got to worry about the pipes going into it and whether the plate will still tilt when I mount it because you know, I don't want to keep drilling holes in the plate. I just want to drill the holes once, mount the stuff and get it happy. So I'm going to hook up the pipe down to here. And nah. I don't think so. No. Yeah, shuffle around and see what fits. Uh, for me, it's real handy to actually get the real, actual components in my hands, put them on the plate, and see how they go.